Guys, so today we're going to take a look at the bias on this 53 Tweed Wide Panel Pro. I'm going to show you guys all about how Ohm's Law works, how to tell if your amp is cathode or grid biased, and uh, we're going to go ahead and check the bias on this one, and uh, let's get to it. Okay, so if we take it Ohm's Law here, uh, we're going to use this law to um, calculate the bias um, current inside of our amp. And uh, V here stands for voltage, I stands for current, and R stands for the resistance. So using a little bit of uh, basic algebra here, we're going to solve for I in that it is the voltage divided by the resistance. So that's how we're going to find the current. And our units are going to be in amperes. So voltage divided by ohms gives you amperes. We're going to use this power dissipation formula to, pow to uh, calculate the power that each 6L6 tube is putting out. So the power is equal to the current times the voltage. Our units for that are going to be in watts. So what, once we calculate the plate current using Ohm's law up here, and we already have measured our voltage with our digital multimeter, we're gonna multiply our two values together to get the power that each tube is putting out. One thing that I wanna note is that there is another way that you can measure the current without having to measure the voltage and resistance. So we're gonna use the calculated method, which is using Ohm's law, knowing the voltage and resistance. You can directly measure the current with your, with your multimeter but what you actually would have to do is you would have to put the multimeter in series with the current. I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's a little more hazardous than just measuring a voltage. Um, it's a little bit more work and this way is going to be just as accurate. So if we take a look over here, I have this little um, diagram of our two 6L6G power tubes and uh, you could see here uh, there's the parts of the tube so the this uh, rectangular block up here is going to be the plate and that comes off of pin 3 of the tube in the middle we have the grid and then down here at the bottom we have the cathode so in a lot of fender amps uh, they're grid biased so uh, if you see the cathodes here from each of the amp the cathodes are coming off they're tied together and in this case we have a resistor and a capacitor in parallel which are tied to ground. If you don't have a resistor and a capacitor here, it's just tied straight to ground. No capacitor, no resistor here. Then your amp is not cathode biased. It's going to be grid biased, which a lot of fender amps are. So um, this is we're going to be showing you how to cathode bias an amp right now. First we're going to measure the resistance across the bias resistor. Uh, we don't need the amp on for this. We could do it when the amp is off. And uh, one thing that I did want to point out is that we don't want to use the theoretical value. So yes, you can look at the, um, the color codes on your resistor and uh, you could see that, let's say it's 250 ohms um, based off of the color code you're not going to want to use that value. You're going to want to take the actual value that you measure with your multimeter. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to turn our amp on and we're going to measure the voltage drop across that bias resistor. That's going to be part of our Ohm's Law equation that we had before where it's voltage divided by resistance. So first we measured the resistance, then we measured the voltage. So next we're going to calculate the plate current using Ohm's Law. So if you remember before, current was equal to voltage divided by resistance. So we're going to take our voltage and we're going to divide it by the resistance that we got in the first step. And that's going to give us our plate current. And since both tubes share the same bypass capacitor and bias resistor up here, you can see that both tubes are tied together and they share one resistor and one capacitor. The calculated plate current that we get in step number three is going to be for both tubes. So if we look at this plate, or if we look at this um, cathode here, it's going to be flowing current to the plates, okay? And if we measure right at this node right here, this point where they're tied together, that's actually the current from this tube and the current from this tube flowing into the same point there 
So that's why we have to divide it by two to get the individual currents. And this actually is going to give us the average of the two current of the two currents. So let's say we get 80 milliamps. If we divide that by two, we get 40 milliamps per tube. But really, this one might be 42 milliamps and this one might be 38 milliamps because we're just taking the average. It's not going to give us the exact plate current for each tube. The last thing we need to measure with our multimeter is we need to measure the plate voltages to ground. So if we look on our diagram up here, the plates are pin three of each of those power tubes. We'll put one of our pins on pin three and the other to ground for our multimeter and we'll measure the voltage drop from the plate to ground. Using our power dissipation formula from earlier, we're going to multiply the plate current after we have already divided it by two, the, we're going to multiply the individual plate current by each plate voltage on the separate tubes. And that'll give us the power that each tube is dissipating. Once we have our um, plate dissipations calculated, we may or may not want to adjust how the amp is biased. So if you'd like some more headroom in your amp, you want it to break up a little bit later, you want it to stay clean a bit longer, um, what you're going to do is you're going to want to increase your bias resistor. So if you increase the value of this bias resistor, what's going to happen as the resistance goes up, the plate current goes down and therefore the plate dissipation goes down. So the higher the plate current, the higher the plate dissipation, the more output your tubes are going to have, the earlier they're going to break up the harder they're going to be pushed. If we want less headroom, well then we're going to do the complete opposite of that. We're going to decrease our bias resistor. So as this resistor is decreased in value, it's going to allow more current to flow. And more current means a higher plate dissipation. We'll check our bias. We'll see if it's to our taste. If we'd like some more headroom, we're gonna increase the resistor, and if we'd like less headroom, we're gonna decrease the resistor. If we pull up the schematic from Fender, we could see that on each 6, 6L6 power tube, the cathodes are tied together, just like in the drawing that I showed you earlier, and they have a capacitor and a resistor in parallel to ground. Okay, so just like our drawing earlier, um, and if you look at the schematic coming off of pin eight of both of our power tubes, they're tied together and they're coming to this bias resistor and bypass capacitor here which are tied together in parallel going to ground up there. Okay so the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we have our amp off and we're going to measure the resistance across this resistor here. And we are measuring 323.6 ohms. We're going to go ahead and turn this amp on. Now that we have our amp up and running, what we're going to want to do is we're going to measure the voltage across from the exact same position. So we're going to measure the voltage drop across the bias resistor in there. So you put your one lead on the ground. And we are measuring 29.06 volts. So now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate our plate current using the Ohm's law that I showed you guys earlier. So we're going to take our voltage drop across the resistor, which is 29.06 volts, and we're going to divide it by 332.6 ohms, which was the resistance across that resistor, and we get 89.8 milliamps. So next, what we're going to do is we are going to divide this by 2, because earlier I talked about how the, each of the tubes is sharing that bias resistor and capacitor there. So if we take half of the current, our average current per tube is 44.9 milliamps. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is we are going to measure from the plate of each tube to ground and we're going to measure the voltage drop. What you're going to want to do is find pin three, put one lead on the ground and measure it. You might get some squeezing noises, that's okay. We have 420 volts and we have 
420 volts on that one as well. We take our plate current, which was 44.9 milliamps. We're gonna multiply that by our plate voltage, which was 420 volts. And we're gonna get 18.858 watts. So each of our power tubes right now is dissipating 18.85 watts. If we wanted to sync to bias each of them individually, is right here, instead of having the cathodes paired together from this tube to this tube, what we would do is we would individually run this cathode to another set of resistor and capacitor. And you'd have room to install it here if you wanted. You could even um, find another place in the chassis that would best suit what, what you want to do. Um, and just tie it to ground up here at the same point. And you'd be able to adjust your resistance values for each. I kind of like to have this amp set up because I mainly use it for nice drive tones, uh, get, get some really uh, nice compression and uh, natural breakup uh, about halfway up on the dial. So I'm pretty happy with how it's biased at 18.89 uh, watts. And I think I'm going to leave it how it is because I really enjoy the way it sounds. Uh, if you did want more headroom, like we said earlier, you just have to increase this resistor here. If you wanted to increase the, uh, the gain on a little bit and you wanted to decrease the headroom, make it break up a little bit earlier, you might want to decrease this resistor here. It's going to flow more current through each of your tubes and uh, it's going to make them work a little bit harder, break up a little bit faster. And stay tuned if you want to check out some of my other videos. I'm going to be making one on how to properly discharge all of your electrolytic caps in an amp before you need to start servicing it. And uh, I'll probably do a general maintenance video and uh, just kind of show you the steps that I go through and things I look for whenever I'm servicing an amp for the first time or whether it's just a general regularly checkup or whatever. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, check out the other ones.